The year is 2007. A young Joe Calzaki is on his legendary undefeated run and on a 19-title defence streak. One more is needed to match Bernard Hopkins' legendary reign with the IBF middleweight title. But the pickings are slim as to who he should fight for the honour. Luckily, a young fighter by the name of Peter Manfredo Jr. had recently won a hit boxing television series by the name of The Contender, and after bringing a lot of buzz around his name, the fight with Kalzaki was made. But is there room for an upset here? Or has the Welsh pride won the fight before it's even started? Welcome back to Boxing After Dark, where today we're going to be looking at one of the more bizarre fights in recent boxing history. Many see this as a prototype to some of the more recent mainstream boxing output happening right now, such as Floyd Mayweather Jr. fighting Logan Paul or actors from Jersey Shore. But the difference here is Peter Manfredo, as well as Joe Calzaki had something to prove for these fights and their careers were on the line, win or lose. Let's get into it. Calzaki, for many, won't need an introduction. A man who's going for his 20th title defence is someone who should not be teased or underestimated, and his opponents knew it, hence why there weren't many options for him to fight leading up to the Manfredo fight. Having just had back-to-back -back wins against an undefeated Jeff Lacey and a prime Sakio Bika, many previous complaints from Calzaki skeptics had been silenced, and boxing fans all over the world were eagerly anticipating the next possible fights he could have. Many fans unsurprisingly wanted him to fight Bernard Hopkins, due to not only their similar amount of title defences, but also the controversial and bitter statements Hopkins had made about Calzaki. But that fights for another day. Manfredo, by this point in time, had a respectable amateur career, and was brought on as a contestant in the aforementioned show The Contender. After getting beaten in his first fight on the show, which counted as his first loss on his professional record, he was sent home. But after another contestant had pulled out, he was brought back in, going on to become the runner-up of the show, which many believe to be a robbery decision on points in favour of the opponent. Due to just how baffling the result was, many saw him as the true winner, making his career far more successful and giving him an opportunity to fight the, the Italian Dragon. Manfredo going into the fight believed that Calzaki had been the champion for far too long at super middleweight, and that not only is 19 title defences more than enough time in the spotlight, but that he could be the guy to put an end to his reign. Calzag, on the other hand, believed Manfredo was severely underrating the Dragon's power, and that the fight wouldn't be going the distance in any known universe. The fight was scheduled for the 7th of April in 2007, and when the night finally came, many believed it to be an exciting fight, but also an extreme mismatch. Whilst they both looked confident when walking to the ring, it was no contest deciding who was the favourite. The crowd roared for Calzaki with polite applause for Manfredo at best. The fight was destined to be a bludgeoning, and despite how much of an underdog Manfredo is as well as how destructive Calzaki can be, boxing is any man's sport. Will Manfredo's luck continue to shine on him like it did with the contestant? Or will Calzaki cement himself further as one of the greatest in the super middleweight division of all time? Calzaki said, I would prefer that Manfredo come right at me, as has been his style in some other fights. But I have a hunch that he'll try to fight smart and box. Calzaki has tried to go to the body a couple times early. Manfredo looking upstairs. Manfredo has not been able to land anything like a jab in the early going. Crowd loves Manfredo in the corner. It's already a slight red welt on the outside of Joe Calzaghe's left eye. Probably the result of head contact. Manfredo is, is having a little more success than he normally would if Calzaghe had fought at long range. And what Calzaghe did was good right there. He's punching and getting out. Left and got in several shots to the body and one short punch upstairs. There's a winging right hand by Calzaghe as Malfredo tries to go with the right hand to the body. Round one was competitive. How you feel? He ain't got nothing. He's slow. Copy box numbers in round one. Calzaghe 13 out of 47. Manfredo 9 out of only 31 punches attempted. Manfredo's regular trainer is Freddie Rokes. Producing staff uh, has taken over the role of advisor in Manfredo's. Punching in and out. And is keeping the distance and taking and utilizing his reach right now. He Relax more. His hands seem to get faster. Catches Manfredo yeah. with a little right hand there. As compared to the first round. Straight left hand by Calzaghe. Manfredo eats it. You heard Enzo, or excuse me, Peter Manfredo. He's there. He lands the left hand and then he pulls right back out after he lands the punch. All of his opponents keep saying, well, he's going to slow down. It hasn't happened yet. Jabs in the second round. 
Calzaghe, 11 of 47 by CompuBox count. Manfredo, 1 of 13. Right hand yeah. counter punch yeah. by Calzaghe. Yeah. Not fast enough to deal with Calzaghe's amazing speed. Unbelievable speed. And his punches are. Manfredo waves him in as if yeah. to say, come on. But and his punches are so straight and accurate right now. And it begins to take on the look of a non competitive sparring set. This is a far more focused Joe Calzaghe than the fighter who struggled for times against Saki Obika in October. And Fredo finally gets off the punch and then is hammered into submission against the ropes. Referee Terry O'Connor watching and watching and he'll stop it right now. And Fredo simply couldn't throw. I did not like the stoppage. I didn't either. I did not like that stoppage. I thought... The man was not hurt. He, was he wasn't hurt. He wasn't and, hurt. In fact, he was trying to... It, you get the feeling he was trying to let Calzaghe... Absolutely. After landing what looks to be hundreds of hooks to Manfredo's head and body, the referee steps in to close off what seemed to be an unfairly one-sided fight. Manfredo was openly very upset with the referee's decision after the fight, thinking he still had gas in the tank with a point to prove. But the ref, along with most at home, believed Manfredo to be far too amateur to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world at that time. Despite Manfredo being upset with the decision, he stayed humble, shocked by just how fast Kalzaki could punch, but did controversially admit that he thought both Bernard Hopkins and Michael Kessler could and would beat him, something that with the power of hindsight has not aged as well as he may have expected. Kalzaki, after the fight, seemed very happy to have reached 20 consecutive title defences, a major feat in the sport of boxing, and a statistic very few could match. Kalzaki then admitted that he wanted to fight Hopkins. Joe would soon get his wish not long after, in which he'd go on to win his 21st title defence. And not only that, but Kalzaki would end Hopkins' streak, who was on 20 successful title defences at the time, solidifying himself as the best in the division. Whilst he still had others to fight, such as Michael Kessler, who he'd beat not long after, and Jermaine Taylor, who he sadly never got to fight. Despite not being able to beat everyone in the super middleweight division, it was clear that Kalzaki was an unstoppable force. He retired with a record of 46-0, with his final win being against the all-time great Roy Jones Jr., and he earned himself a seat in the Boxing Hall of Fame in 2014. Manfredo, however, didn't go on to be as successful as Kalzaki, unsurprisingly, and never won a major world title but that didn't stop him from having some memorable fights against the, at the time, unbeaten Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and a devastating loss to Sakio Bica with a brutal KO in the third round. He retired in 2019 with a record of 42-7, and seven, something far more respectable than most would have believed at the time of his loss to Joe Kalzaki. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe to the channel and don't be afraid to leave a like. This has been a Boxing After Dark production. Thank you for watching.